The Ford Tractor Late 1950-1952 Steering Gear Assembly. This video is brought to you by Just 8N's Ford Tractor Parts and Restoration Service. This video applies to Ford 8N tractors built between late 1950 to 1952 beginning with serial number 216989 and higher. Begin by installing the steering shaft lower bearing. First insert the bearing race into the housing. The race is pressed into a boss at the base of the housing. Follow this with the freeze plug which is pressed into a recess below the bearing race. After installation, the relative locations of the bearing race and freeze plug within the boss are as shown here. The shaft and ball nut assembly is installed next. Slide the upper bearing onto the shaft, then the bearing retainer, and followed by the bearing retainer eyelet. Note the orientation of the gear teeth. Rotate the ball nut until it is centered on the grooved portion of the shaft. Insert the shaft assembly into the housing so the bearing rests on the installed bearing race. Slide a bearing onto the shaft in the orientation shown, followed by a shim. More than one shim may be necessary for proper shaft end play, as described later. The upper housing is attached next, but before mating the upper housing, insert a bearing race into the bottom of the upper housing. Ensure that the upper housing is oriented with the threaded boss towards the rear of the steering gear. Secure the upper housing with four bolt and lock washer assemblies. A slight preload on the bearings is required. This is accomplished by checking the shaft end play by measuring the vertical travel of the shaft. The end play should be between six to ten thousandths of an inch. Adding additional shims increases the end play. After the end play is adjusted, verify that the steering shaft rotates freely. Insert a bushing and seal into both the right and left hand side sector shaft bosses. Note that the 8N 3585 packing as shown in the Ford documentation has been obsoleted and is no longer used. Place the right hand sector shaft into the housing, mating the ball nut and sector shaft gear teeth and assuring the ball nut is centered on the grooved portion of the shaft. Note the alignment of the gear teeth. The six smaller teeth face the rear of the housing. The middle gear tooth of the three larger gear teeth on the sector shaft mates with the center groove on the ball nut assembly. Place a shim on the gear lash adjusting screw and insert the adjuster into the slot of the sector shaft. Rotate the sector shaft so the adjuster remains in place. Now assemble the sector shaft cover. First, insert a bushing into the cover, followed by an O-ring gasket placed in the circular groove. Then place the adjuster packing in the boss on the outside face. The sector cover is installed by mating the threaded hole in the cover with the adjuster screw and then inserting a hex wrench into the screw and rotating the screw until the threads are engaged and the cover face is pulled onto the mating housing face. Do not tighten the adjuster screw at this point as the gear lash will be adjusted later. Bolt the cover to the housing with two bolt and lock washer assemblies. Place a hex nut and washer on the adjuster screw, but leave them loose for now. This procedure is repeated for the left hand side sector shaft and cover. 
The alignment of the left-hand sector gear teeth is accomplished by first ensuring the correct alignment of the ball nut and right-hand sector shaft and that the ball nut is centered on the steering shaft. Make sure that the middle tooth of the seven gear teeth on the left-hand sector shaft is engaged with the center groove of the right-hand sector gear teeth. Repeat the procedure for installing the sector shaft adjuster and sector shaft cover. The sector shaft's gear tooth engagement, or lash, can now be adjusted. Place the steering wheel on the steering shaft to allow shaft rotation, but don't fasten it yet. Start with the right hand sector shaft. Adjust the backlash between the right hand sector shaft and ball nut by rotating the adjuster screw. The backlash is essentially the amount that the steering shaft turns before the sector shaft starts turning. A clockwise rotation engages the teeth and reduces backlash while the counterclockwise rotation disengages them and increases the backlash. The correct mesh is set when the backlash is eliminated, which is determined by a lack of free play in the steering wheel. Torque the lash adjusting screws hex nut and recheck the backlash. Repeat this procedure for the left hand sector shaft. Adjust the backlash until both shafts turn simultaneously with the steering wheel. Rotate the steering wheel throughout the full range of motion and verify there is no binding. When the backlash is adjusted properly, the ball nut and sector shafts should move simultaneously with the steering wheel rotation. At this point, remove the upper housing and fill the housing with either 90 weight gear oil or high pressure grease, and then reinstall the housing and torque the bolts. Use care so as not to disturb the steering shaft assembly. Now install the steering column bearing assembly in the upper housing shaft tube, followed by the spring seat, spring, and seal. Place the steering wheel on the column and secure with the washer and acorn nut. Install the left pitman arm in the orientation as shown, along with the dust seal, lock washer, and nut. The arms are keyed to the sector shaft splines at 90 degree angles, so the angle is correctly fixed if the arm is oriented as shown. The steering gear assembly is now complete. To see more videos from Just 8 Ends, remember to like and subscribe.